Hello everyone and welcome to Rules Kitchen. Today we're going to go over a beautiful vanilla shortbread cookies. It is one of my favorite cookies and in France you call it the Sablé Breton. Put your apron on and let's get started. All right, so this is all of our ingredients for this uh, special recipe. We have uh, butter, sugar, flour, baking powder, salt, egg yolk, and our beautiful Tahitian vanilla bean. The first things we're going to do is to uh, have our soft butter. I am using 82% fat content butter. What is going to give the full flavor is really the butter, the butter and the salt will be really uh, important and that's going to be really, really tasty. Uh, so let's add the butter in our uh, mixer. Voilà. And then we are going to add our sugar, all in once, regular sugar. So during this time, um, I am going to um, scrape that vanilla bean. This is a beautiful vanilla bean coming from uh, uh, our friends, Nelson Massey, uh, amazing uh, vanilla company. They helped me a lot for the World Chocolate Master. So this is a shout out for them. Thank you so much. I'm still using your vanilla. Um, so there is a different way to scrape the vanilla bean. And I recently learned after 20 years from a really good friend of mine. Uh, his name is Guillaume Mabillo. It's a MOF in France and a really uh, well-known uh, pastry chef actually. And uh, after 20 years, I realized that I didn't know how to scrape properly a vanilla bean. So today I'm going to use this technique. So pretty much, so you have the vanilla bean like this and there is uh, the, um, the tip of the vanilla bean here. So I'm going to uh, put it on a, a cutting board so what you want to do is really to flat the vanilla bean from left to right. Voilà. With the back of your knife. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut that vanilla bean from the middle all the way to the end of the vanilla bean. So now we have our vanilla bean that is spread into. And what I'm going to do is use the back of my knife and I will start to scrape from bottom to top. And I have all the vanilla bean inside my knife nothing in the cutting board. And we do the same thing on the other side. And all the seed from the vanilla bean are on the knife. So what I'm going to do is to add my vanilla seed inside my butter and the sugar now. And uh, the leftover of the vanilla, I can actually uh, keep it uh, and dry it and I can um, mix it when it's fully dry and use as a powder for other uh, ingredients or I can do uh, a vanilla extract. I can collect them a lot, put some alcohol inside and then you can make your own vanilla extract maybe in another video coming up. So now I'm going to add the, the uh, vanilla seed inside my butter and sugar. Voilà. and then mix all three ingredients together. All right, so now I'm going to look into uh, uh, my butter and what I want to do is I want to scrape my bowl just to make sure that all the ingredients are well combined together. So you see over here, you can see there is a, the, the butter that is not completely mixed over here. What I want to do is scrape this off. 
a little trick. I don't know if uh, uh, you are like me, but uh, I'm kind of a lazy person in general. So I like to uh, use a, a little uh, trick to uh, make my life easier. So really often I see uh, the people who when they bake, they use their uh, things and they're just gonna put it just like this on a table, right? And I'm not going to because I don't want to clean it. But what I found out really genius and I was back then in my uh, culinary school, one day the teacher took the paddle and he simply put it like this on a counter to not make the counter dirty. This hold together. That magical. To me, the day that I saw that was just a revelation. This is brilliant because I'm not going to have to clean the table. So during this time, I am uh, mixing well the butter uh, and scrape the bowl just to make sure everything is well combined. Okay. Voilà. Using my little paddle over here. And then we mix it again. Voilà. All right, so now we have our flour. We're going to mix our salt and our baking powder. And then we're gonna add all of those ingredients to our mixture of butter, vanilla, and sugar. Ice. That's starting to look good. You don't want to over mix it either. Perfect. You can tell that your cookie dough is ready when uh, the whole dough is starting to get an attach from the side of the bowl, like this one. This is um this is how the dough looks like at the end. So we're going to uh, pull away our mixing bowl. Okay, so. Mm. You see this dough? It's really buttery. I can have, and it's a raw dough right now. But I can already have the taste of the butter and the salt, which is perfect. But I like the shortbread with a little bit more salt. So what I will do at the end, before bake it, I'm going to put a little bit of fleur de sel. And that's gonna be the, the, the cherry uh, on the top of the cake. So now I'm going to give you another trick. Um, really often, there is some uh, difficulty on rolling the dough, the dough stick on the table, uh, and it's, uh, it's really not fun to work with. So today I'm going to have two pieces of parchment paper, one on the bottom, then I'm going, to, I'm going to put the dough on the top and then another piece of parchment paper. So, so we have our piece of parchment paper over here. I'm going to put it on the table. Okay. Voilà. Then I'm going to have my dough over here. Okay. Then with my hand, I'm going to start to pre-shape my dough. Voila. Trying to be consistent. And then another piece of parchment paper on the top. And then I'm going to roll my dough evenly. So. 
So I like to roll my dough about a quarter of an inch. And then I remove my parchment paper. So you see sometimes using this technique with parchment paper, you're going to have the parchment paper that's going inside your dough and I might create uh, uh, some, some crack, uh, but it's okay, it's not a big deal. You can just remove your piece of parchment paper, pull it back, and then re-roll it a little bit more to eliminate that mark. So really not, uh, not something to worry about too much. Then we remove our piece of parchment paper and then we have our beautiful dough that is ready to be cut out. I am going to use a, a, a three inch uh, diameter um, cutter uh, to start to cut my dough. So you want to cut it right away. And what I do is when I cut the dough like this, I give a quarter turn on the right. That will ensure that your dough is well cut. My dough that is already pre-cut, what I'm going to do is to take the whole parchment paper, put it on my sheet pens, and then put it in the cooler for about five minutes. The butter from the dough is going to harden and it's just going to be easier to unmold your pre-cut dough. Voila, let's go in the cooler. All right, so now what I'm going to do is uh, take out uh, the dough uh, that is around this disc, uh, and I can just put it on the side for now. Yeah. Voilà. And then remove one by one my beautiful cookies. And you see the thickness is really about a quarter of an inch. Yeah? That's gonna puff a little bit more in the oven so that's gonna give uh, really this, uh, this crunchy texture. Then today I'm using a uh, silpeng. The silpeng, it's uh, a, a little non-sticky mat that will uh, um, distribute the heat evenly because the micro holes that are in it. All right. And grab. Those cookies won't spread too much in the oven. So we are, we are at home, okay? Uh, room for mistakes or, uh, okay, uh, a cookie is going to always be a cookie and it's always gonna be good. Like this one was really the border of, uh, of the dough and it's not perfect, it's a little bit of crack. Well, okay, uh, let's, let's leave a room for mistakes also. Uh, you know, it's not gonna be the end of the day and I can guarantee you that it's still gonna be tasty. So uh, what I will recommend is just just go for it, you know. We are not trying to uh, uh, be someone else uh, today. We are just making beautiful cookies. So um, let's get it done. The good things over here is that with my left uh, leftover dough, um, I can just re-roll it and reuse it. I'm not going to do it right now in camera, but um, I can definitely either re-roll it right away or I can reshape it this way, okay.
And then I can either rewrite it or put it in a freezer and use it in a week, in two weeks, in a month, whenever you want. But today I'm going to put it in a cooler. All right, and now I want to have a beautiful coloration when I'm going to put my cookie in the oven. So I'm going to use an egg wash. An egg wash is pretty much a mixture of egg yolk with a little bit of water and a little bit of salt to brush atop any kind of pastries, doughs, breakfast pastries, such as croissant, chocolate croissant, etc. Today, we are going to apply some egg wash to our sable breton dough, shortbread. So I'm separating the egg white and the egg yolk. And then today, because I just found out that I don't have a brush in my kitchen, poor preparation, I know, but I found this little sponge and this is the first time actually I'm going to egg wash something with a sponge like this, but I can guarantee you it's going to work. So I have my egg yolk over here and my sponge. I'm just going to mix this together. All right. And I tap, tap, tap on the side just to make sure to take out the extra egg yolk. And then what I'm going to do is put a little bit egg yolk all over my cookie. Voila. Beautiful. You see the difference between this one and this one? Voila. Nice egg yolk. I like to uh, use a little fork to make a beautiful uh, um, little uh, drawing on my cookie. Huh? Uh, so what I'm going to use is the back of my forks and then I will um, scrape the cookie just to give a little texture in the form of a uh, just to give a little pattern on my cookie. And then I was talking to you early about the fleur de sel. So the fleur de sel is pretty much uh, salt. Um, that is uh, this one in particular, um, hand-picked in a small part of France called Ile de Ré. It's actually a little island that I used to live for about a couple of years. And that's where I learned some of those beautiful tricks that I'm teaching you today. So what I'm going to do is to take a little bit of uh, fleur, de, fleur de sel over here, put it a little bit across my uh, cookie. So it's going to be salted butter shortbread cookie, a beautiful sablé breton. I cannot wait to try this one. It is definitely one of my favorite cookies. My mouth is watering right now. So our oven is set at 300 Fahrenheit. It is, in my opinion, the best temperature to bake evenly uh, sugar cookie. Let's set a timer at 15 minutes. All right, I think our cookies are ready. Oh yes. Look at this. That was how to make those beautiful 
shortbread cookies, sable et breton. Mmh. Mmh. Buttery, flaky, saltiness. That a bomb cookie. And this is it, everyone. If you like this video, you know what to do, right? Push the button down below. Subscribe so you will be notified for every single recipe. Until then, au revoir and see you next time.